my name is Vidur Mahajan. I run Carpool. Carpool is the caring analytics platform. Uh, we're a small team based in New Delhi, India, but we have big dreams. Uh, and we think we're uh, probably one of the only end-to-end -end development testing and deployment platforms for medical imaging AI uh, around the world right now. Uh, we've got two stellar speakers lined up for you guys. Uh, we have, uh, and they'll be sharing their experience of using our platform. We've done a bunch of different things with them. And thank you so much for showing up. Uh, first up, uh, we'll have Paras Lakhani. Paras is a celebrity in the uh, in the radiology AI realm. He wrote one of the first papers on tuberculosis AI. Uh, he serves as the associate professor of uh, radiology at the Thomas Jefferson University. And uh, without further ado, Paras. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm not sure how much of a celebrity I am, but I'll take it. Uh, so I'm here to present you what we've been doing with Carpool. So I've known Vidor for a few years now, and you know we're very excited to bring Carpool on board to our hospital. So I want to share with you what we do at our hospital and how we think this platform can help us. So I don't have any disclosures. So a little bit about Thomas Jefferson. So I'm a radiologist at Thomas Jefferson. I serve as clinical director of informatics. And um, we have a lot of initiatives in AI, but our hospital has grown quite a bit in the past couple years. And now we're, we have um, many different hospitals, 16 actually throughout the Philadelphia and New Jersey area. And we do over 2 million radiology studies a year. And a lot, a lot of these mergers have occurred in the last four or five years. So it was pretty overwhelming for us to, um, to take care of all of this. And one of our goals is to standardize everything that we do across our sites. So going into AI, um, just personally, we've been very interested in AI. And since 2016, we have around 10 or 15 home-built algorithms that, we, that we've developed. And on top of that, you know, we have a data science team outside of radio, our radiology department, and they do quite a bit of data, data science work. And um, actually, they were a semi-finalist in one of the recent CMS AI challenges, just to show that you know our hospital is doing quite a bit in AI. Um, but our vision with radiology is we need to find a way to deploy AI at scale, and we have to have a way to evaluate algorithm performance over time, and also across our sites. And that's actually a pretty big challenge. And um, you know, it is easy to build an algorithm that makes a prediction, but it's harder to make that prediction um, with a high accuracy and then consistently, um, consistently over time and at many sites. So one of our goals is to you know, find a partner who can help us in this uh, goal. So this slide just outlines some of the projects we've done with the Caring team. Uh, we've been working on various research projects for the past two years, but it was only this year that we were actually starting to engage in more prospective evaluations. So the thing that we're working on currently is we actually had an AI model that was developed in-house two years ago, and it was published as an RSNA abstract. And it had a very high sensitivity and specificity of 99%. So, you know, these were the numbers that we had. Um, and we wanted to redeploy that algorithm two years later. Uh, the specificity went down to 95%, which meant our positive predictive value went down to 25%, which is not acceptable. And we were afraid that radiologists wouldn't use this algorithm. So we have to find a way to monitor our algorithms and maintain performance. And so, what you can do with Purple is, for any algorithm that you deploy, you can get uh, basically an assessment of how the model does, and we call this validation. And I think they have a really nice graph on how you can see how your model is performing. So for example, you can look at your true positives, which are in red, your true negatives are in blue, and then false negatives are in yellow, and false positives are in green. And you can see how far north or how far south your algorithm is doing. Ideally, you want all your blues to be on the bottom and you want all your reds to be on top. And then anything in between could be a problem case. So this is actually not a real algorithm. We found out that um, there were some issues with this, but this is nice to show how you can fine tune your algorithm and how you can look at problem cases. 
and then you can also get a performance report. So on the bottom left, you'll see here, there's a, that's an example of a false positive. And you can see um, what the AI result is, what the ground truth is, and you can look at the image. And you know, maybe we might find that in COVID cases, because that looks like a patient with COVID, maybe we have a lot of false positives. We're not sure. This is something we can look into. And maybe that's why performance is not as good. Uh, for false negatives, that's, there's an example on the bottom right. And the AI result said that there was no pneumothorax, but indeed it is present. And what, what's nice is you can enter in a comment. So we plan to roll this out with a lot of our trainees our residents, our fellows, and other researchers, so they can add comments that could help us. Maybe we might find that the algorithm doesn't do as well on the left side versus the right side, or maybe it misses apical pneumothoraces versus basal pneumothoraces. So these types of comments and feedback uh, mechanisms nice. Uh, this was a study we did with Carpo a couple years ago. Actually, it was last year, and I think it was published here at RSNA. Um, our MSK division work with them to look how AI can bias uh, a radiology result. Oops. So um, what we found was that the AI heat maps and the AI score actually tended to bias the radiologist and the radiologists were more likely to pick a result that was similar to what the AI had suggested. And this is for osteo this is for grading osteoarthritis on a scale of, let's say, zero to four. Four being severe osteoarthritis and zero being normal. Um, so this is a really interesting area of research and we're really excited to do more studies like this because we really don't know how AI can bias a radiologist. You think that you know the ground truth is AI, or, but we don't really know where the ground truth is. And maybe you might have an algorithm where the radiologist outperforms AI and they're biased in the wrong direction. But you need a tool or you need a system where you can evaluate this prospectively or evaluate it on your data. So I thought this was a nice study. More recently, we've become interested in our pneumothorax algorithm and we wanted to see which processing method to use during our deployment. And what we found was that images that were like, over, like heavily pre-processed for example, the Clayhe 1 and Clayhe 2 um, types of pre-processing, which are types of histogram equalization. While they made the pneumothorax easier to see for the radiologist, they actually negatively impacted the algorithm. And the AUC was lower in these heavily pre-processed images compared to just a standard PNG or JPEG. Um, we thought that was interesting, especially since when we trained our algorithm, we trained it to handle any processing type and we had all of these um, different processing techniques in our training data set. But um, this was good to note, so when we deploy it, we'll keep note of it. So in summary, what our goals are with Purple is we need a robust inferencing platform at our site that can handle lots of different models. We want to be able to handle homegrown models, models that are public, models from other academic uh, institutions that we want to study, and we also need a way to evaluate vendors as well. So we want to do all of those things. We need a way to be able to validate those models over time at different sites. I didn't show you a slide, but you can actually validate models based off the scanner it was performed at as well. And we want to be able to do a comparative assessment and also have a toolkit that didn't require any coding so that radiologists, trainees, other scientists that don't have a coding background can work with these models and help curate and be part of the curation process. So we're really excited to continue working with the company and, and excited to see what we can do moving forward. Thank you.